So in this video we're looking at the Doppler effect and uh, what it is, explaining how it occurs, looking at formula and some applications. It's actually a lot of applications for the Doppler effect, but what is it first of all? Um, when you're standing on the side of the road, okay, hopefully you're standing even though your legs look a bit broken there, and you're watching a car driving past. That's how we're going to do a car, that'll do. There it is, wheels. Okay, cars driving past particular velocity, and um, you hear the sound of the the engine um, as it travels past you, and it goes from a high to a low pitch or a low frequency. So it sort of goes something like, and that different sound, even though if you're sitting in the car, um, driving past, the sound seems to stay the same, but for the observer outside the car, um, you get this uh, this change in, uh, in pitch, and that is the Doppler effect. So we want to explain it, we want to try and explain it, I'll try and keep this relatively quick. Um, if this is a top view of the source, and that source is moving that way, what's going to happen is, as the sound waves are released, this is a very rough drawing, but as the sound waves are released and while this object is moving to the side, there's going to be an effect of bunching up, okay, bunching up of all of these wave fronts, okay, as a wave is released, okay, so it's, um, each wave is released closer to um, the wave that had just preceded it, so this wave right at the front end here was the one that came out first then then the object moved a little bit closer released a wave and it's had the effect of, of uh, starting off closer um, to where um, it should have been as if the motion was stationary so if it's stationary so this is for moving and then for stationary we've got our object here and it's just going to send out nice spherical Okay, if you can draw spherical, nice spherical, evenly radiating um, wave fronts. Okay, so uh, the other, the opposite effect. Just going back to the moving diagram here, as uh, as it's moving towards, it bunches up. As it's moving away, they're going to stretch out. So these sides here are stretched further, and the wavelength is higher than it would have been if it was motionless. Okay. So uh, let's just look at our, um, uh, our formula for V equals F lambda. Okay, so uh, V equals F lambda. And if we can see when our waves wavelength is decreasing, so if that decreases, remember the velocity is in air, and the velocity is determined by the medium, so the velocity does not change. That means for this equation to hold true for our sound waves, the frequency must increase by the same proportion that the wavelength decreases. So that's for that's for the compressed. Okay, if we uh, just change colour um, in here, if we're dealing with the um, the uh, expanded part, um, we've got the wavelengths increasing. Again, the velocity has to stay the same, but the frequency will decrease. And so as they, as the uh, object moves away from the observer, these wavelengths will appear, appear to be longer, and therefore the frequency will appear to be lower. Okay, so that's the explanation of the Doppler effect. Now, it's one really important thing is um, you could have a, a moving observer and a stationary source. So you could have the car in, in one place and, and, and with the engine running, and the person runs past it, and you'd get the same effect. No. Maybe not quite as, as much because the velocity of the person is usually much less than the velocity of the car, but you'll still get it. So the key point here is not that the source has to be moving, but that the object and the source, sorry, the observer and the source must have a relative velocity, okay, a non-zero relative velocity, okay. Um, okay, so the formula that applies to this, I'm just going to give it to you is that, uh, and you can toy around with this to use wavelength and all sorts, but if dash, the formula that you perceive as the observer, so this person is F dash, 
is the frequency that the um, the person who's in the car would would hear. Okay, the the normal frequency times by a modifying kind of uh, coefficient, and that's the velocity of the wave divided by a velocity of the wave plus or minus the velocity of the source. Okay, so that's that's the formula. I'll explain that plus or minus shortly. So um, you're modifying you're modifying the original frequency by whatever happens here, and that depends on the velocity of the source and the velocity of the medium, but mostly the velocity of the source, and that gives you the frequency you hear. So um, what is that plus or minus? It depends whether you are uh, having the car traveling towards you or away from you. So when it's traveling towards you, you'll hear a higher than usual frequency, which means VW over VW plus or minus VS must be greater than 1. And if it's greater than 1, that means VW must be higher than the, the VW plus minus VS. Okay, so VS subtracts from it when you're dealing with it. it's coming towards you. When it's going away from you, um, now you hear the low, the low sound. So the frequency must be lower, uh, sorry, this frequency must be lower than this frequency. So the ob observed frequency is lower than the original. For that to happen, this part of the brackets must be less than 1, which means the bottom has to be greater than VW. So VW plus for the case of when it's passing, uh, going away from you. Okay, so that's that's the maths. That's, there's actually not a lot of maths. Um, you really need to do some examples to practice with that. The final thing I want to talk about is some applications, some really useful applications. Okay, applications or uses of the Doppler effect. Um, one of these uh, common uses is speed cameras. Okay, speed cameras, I believe they use microwaves and they uh, send out a beam of a microwave and uh, it bounces off the object that's moving and the object that's moving now becomes a, a sort of a secondary source because of the waves bouncing off and uh, that tells the relative velocity when it's detected back by the uh, speed radar gun um, tells the relative velocity between the observer and the uh, hopefully stationary observer and the um, uh, uh, the speeding car. Okay, so that's one that's particularly useful. Um, really cool use is in uh, analyzing spectrums and the redshift in the universe, astrophysics, to detect um, the expansion of the universe. Okay, this is very cool. I'll give this in a little bit more detail. You can stop the video now if you've had enough, um, but I'm going to give this in a bit more detail. So we're here on Earth. And somewhere distant, there's a little star twinkling away, and there's light coming from that star. Okay, um, that star is going to be made up of hydrogen and helium, and 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 so forth. Um, we, we're assuming we can we can uh, heat up hydrogen and helium and produce nuclear reactions artificially um, to to produce light of a spectrum. Sorry, the background's getting very loud here. Hopefully I'll... But anyway, you produce a spectrum from those and it might have a particular uh, fingerprint, okay, which is um, of those particular elements. We can test that spectrum on Earth and um, we can see that um, it holds holds a particular um, pattern of, 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 of dark and bright fringes, if you like. You can use your diffraction gratings to separate out these spectrums and, and analyze them. Um, but what, uh, what we notice when we do it on Earth and heat up these elements, and we compare it to the elements um, and the light coming from the suns and stars in and, and different places, it's all shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. Um, and red being the longer wavelengths, longer means um, everything has to be moving away from us okay which is really cool really interesting because the universe everywhere is expanding um, and uh, what we what, what is a common misconception is that we might be at the center of the universe since everywhere away from us is where the redshift occurs and the answer is we just don't know whether we're in the center or not we can't tell because uh, the entire fabric of the universe is stretching. That's what the expansion means. It doesn't just mean everything's moving away from one point. 
it means um, we might be here on this and a star might be over here and the whole of that fabric is just stretching out in each direction including where we are here so so this grid point would be increasing in size and so would this grid point so you don't have to be at the center of uh, anything for it to um, to have that same stretching occurring which would increase the distance between which is causing a relative velocity and that's what you need for the Doppler effect to occur, relative velocity. But cool that it works with light waves as well as sound waves. Um, don't think it'll work with water waves because they don't operate and they're not perceived in quite the same way. But there you go, that is the Doppler effect. Very cool, very interesting and a lot of modern uh, practical uses and it could just be the fun use of sitting at a racetrack and listening to Formula One cars passing you by and going, wow, physics is cool. <laughs> Thank you.